Whenever I smell asphalt, I think of Marine. That's the last sensation I had before I blacked out. The thick smell of asphalt. And the first thing I saw when I woke up was her face. She said she'd fix my bike. Free. No strings attached. I should have known then that things are never that simple. Yeah, when I think of Marine, I think of two things. Asphalt and trouble. Rip Burger, you're dumber than dirt. Oh, Mr. Corley, if you'd only listen to my plan, my vision. I know your plan, Rip Burger. You're waiting for me to die so you can take over my company. Oh, sir. <laughs> That's horrible. I am not waiting for you to die. You know I've never liked you, Rip. But you have business know-how and killer instincts that I respect. Why, thank you, sir. But this latest idea of yours, riding up to our shareholders' meeting with a gang of bikers? Who do you think you're fooling? The shareholders, sir. It's good PR to be seen hobnobbing with real Corley Motors customers. What do you know about our customers, Adrian? You've never even been on a bike. Well, you know I'd be on one right now, sir, if it weren't for my destabilizing inner ear condition. Ah, your ears are fine. It's what's between them that scares me. Go some boys I can ride with. Step on it. Let's find out who they are. You know, Ben, we're broke. Yeah. And if some cash doesn't come our way soon, we're in big trouble. Relax. I have a feeling something's coming our way. Something big. Eh, uh, you better stay out here, Rip. This place is bikers only. <laughs> All right! Who's the guy that drove over my car? What could possibly...
possibly be taking so long. Maybe old man Corley got himself in trouble. Yeah, maybe they took the old guy out back and worked him over with a two-by-four. Hmm, an appealing notion, but improbable. More likely he's boring them to death with some tale of the glory days. <laughs> but Malcolm, isn't that illegal? Not back then it wasn't. <laughs> so who do you ride with these days? He rides with me. Although I'm sure he'd much rather be riding with your little club. I told you to wait out in the limo, Rip Burger. I thought you might like some help with your sales pitch, sir. Sales pitch? Yes. We've come here today to offer you and your men employment. Mr. Corley requires an escort to the annual Corley Motors shareholders meeting. Does this look like an escort service to you? You would be well compensated for your time, of course. Not interested. It's uh, fairly obvious that you could use the money. Listen, I said we're not for rent. The Polecats are not goons for hire. Not even if it were Malcolm Corley's dying wish? Rip Burger! That does it! I'm gonna... Hold on there, Malcolm. If you don't mind, I'd like to step outside with Mr. Rip Burger for a little chat. Excellent idea. And the doctor says he only has a few months to live. That's bad news for all of us. He's not just a nice guy. He's also the last motorcycle maker in the country. What happens to Corley Motors if he dies? Don't worry. I have a plan. And if you come to the shareholders meeting with us, you'll find out what it is. No dice, Rip Burger. The Polecats are not thugs for rent. If you want to buy muscle, you should go find the Rot Wheelers. The old man says it's the Polecats or nothing. Then I guess it'll have to be nothing. Hmm. And that's your last word? That's it. Well, I'd like to make you just one final offer. <sighs> Bolus, take this coat and go get his motorcycle. We'll have to tie up this little 200 pound loose end. <laughs> It'll need to look like an accident. That stuffed shirt actually thinks I'll leave him in control of Corley Motors when I go. Boy, is he in for a surprise. Hey, where's Ben going? Your colleague has decided to accept our generous offer after all. As a matter of fact, he's gone on ahead to scout out the route. He did? Well then, let's roll em, boys! Yahoo! Corbill, here we come! I've woken up and worse. I'm not putting my lips on that. Take that. I've touched it enough. They're empty. I can't see any use for those. No. Empty boxes. He really should flatten these so they can be recycled. Nah, he can flatten his own boxes. Good thing Ripburger didn't touch my bike. Good thing for him. Some joker took my keys. I don't like that. The kickstand. Hmm. No. No. It's empty, but I can see the bartender in there. It's screwed shut. I prefer doors anyway. Hmm. Open up. Hmm. 
I, uh, fixed your door. It was sticky. Look, I don't want no trouble. Just leave me out of this mess. Looks like you're out of customers. Yeah, your gang talk off with those, those well-dressed gentlemen. So what'll it be, Mac? Where'd everybody head off to? What am I, the cruise director? Maybe they're up on the Lido deck. <laughs> I think you're in on this whole bum deal. Yeah, well, what are you gonna do about it? What do you have? I wanna know who knocked me out. Maybe you just passed out. You should learn to handle your liquor. You want something? I'm looking for my keys. I have no idea what you're talking about. You gonna order something? No. The monitor doesn't have any controls. Yeah, the signal is piped in from Kickstand National Headquarters. Man, I wish they had a jukebox. Yeah, right. Play. Good thing that's a badger. Why? Cause if that were a dead polecat, I'd have to trash the place. Its little feet are nailed to the piano. There's a joke here about stuffing, but I sure don't know what it is. Those might look good mounted on my handlebars. Nah. That's one big fish. Yep. What's this? It's a big blobby gray shape. I was taking an art class. Got no home to hang it in. Fifteen guys with towels in their belts? My graduating class from bartending school. Are you the guy with the lampshade on his head? Or the guy chugging out of the punch bowl? Lampshade. This your pit bull? Nah, that's my baby picture. Whoa. Watch it, that's my sister. Ah, booze. Can't. Got a ride. Hmm. It's empty, don't get any ideas. Nothing to grab, it's empty. I've never liked nose rings. Me neither, but someone dared me. You know what might look better on your nose? What? The bar. <clears throat> now don't mess around with me. All right, all right. I got your keys, but I don't know nothing. They had guns. They told me to store you as long as possible. Why? I don't know, I don't know. I overheard them say something about an ambush up the road. What else? Nothing, nothing. Look, man, here are your keys, all right? Oh, uh, someone did say something about killing you and making it look like an accident. They didn't do too good of a job there, but why ambush the pole gants? I'd better get moving. I've got nothing to say. Serious. Someone's ambushing the polo gas. 
someone's ambushing the polecats? Oh, heavens, whatever will we do? Ha <laughs> ha! That does it. Come on, kitty! Let's get down! This is gruesome. My editor better print these in color. Now I have to get you some help, I suppose. Ah, uh, quit moaning. I know someone around here who can fix anything. What are you? I'm a mechanic. And apparently a pretty good doctor as well. My name's Maureen. My name's Ben. Why did you hit me over the head, Maureen? You were in an accident. A reporter found you and brought you and your bike here. My bike? What have you done with my bike? Brought it back from the dead. Sort of like what I did with you. I need a little help getting it finished, though. How's it look? It looks better than it did, but you gotta help me out. The front forks are wasted, so you'll have to get some new ones. And someone stole my welding torch. Can you believe that? I can't finish without one. And last but not least, I patched up your ruptured gas tank, but you're out of fuel and I don't have any. Who are you? Maureen, remember? If that's too hard, maybe you should just stick with Mo. Do you have a last name? I prefer not to use it. What about you? Same deal. Then it's Ben and Mo forever, I guess. This an authorized Corley Service Center? Now you could call this a Corley Service Center, but I don't have the official paperwork. Ah, an illegitimate Corley operation. I prefer to think of it as a renegade Corley operation. Where'd you learn bikes? I grew up working on them with my dad. One summer we did nothing but restore this old hard tail together. I mean, we scrubbed every bolt until it shined. But he took off one day and he never came back. So I switch to toasters. You live in this town? Well, Melonweed's not much of a town. What's left of it is sinking about a foot a year. People either learn to adjust or they leave, which is fine with me. Not a people person? I'm just better with toasters, that's all. Look, if you want me to finish this thing... Say no more. Mo. Yeah, Ben? Where am I supposed to find all this stuff? You can hack it, tough guy. Where's the gas? Well, there's a whole tower full of it at the edge of town. I have this crazy, irrational intuition that tells me maybe it's worth checking out. How am I supposed to find your torch? I don't know. Set up a dragnet. Still can't believe someone would steal my torch. Who around here would do a thing like that? Where am I going to find new forks? Well, they don't have to be new-new, just not broken into little pieces. You could start by asking Todd in the trailer across the way. He runs the junkyard. Actually, I think I can handle it. Good. 
I don't have any money to pay you with. Hey, this one's free. I haven't touched anything besides a toaster for so long. Getting my hands on your hog has really been a pleasure. Well, thanks. Don't sweat it. I gotta get out of this town, fast. Trouble with the law? Not in this county. Then what's the hurry? My gang's in trouble. Polecats? How'd you know that? Big emblem on the back of your jacket. They're headed for an ambush, so I gotta catch them. We better get this bad boy back on the road then, huh? Well, I'll let you get back to work. Let me know if you need any aspirin or anything. This hose smells like gas. Wish this gas can was full. That wouldn't be smart. Who's this? Oh, that's me and my Uncle Pete. He took care of me after Dad split at this place he called the Mink Ranch. When he died, he left it to me. You're a mink farmer? Nah, that place went belly up long before he died. But I still go back there whenever I need to get away for a while. Oh, good, you're not dead yet. I might still get a quote. I heard you saved my life. Yeah, but don't worry. I wasn't trying to. I was just looking for some nice roadside disaster photos and you helped. Who'd want a picture of me bleeding? It's not the blood. It's the way you were, all twisted up like a pretzel. Listen, I've got to stop an ambush. Ambush? Really? Where? I don't know exactly. My crew is escorting some VIPs to the Corley Motors shareholders meeting, and there's an ambush waiting for them somewhere up the road. Uh, I... I... Yeah? This is hard for me. I... I need... Come on, man, spit it out! Could you give me a ride in your car? I've got to stop this ambush. You're right. We have to get to the ambush, all right. But I'm afraid I'm without wheels at the moment. How did you get us here? Hitched. Well, I'd better be going. All right, drive safe now. Pretty small to be carrying me around. I rolled you. I owe her better than that. It's empty. I don't want to hurt Moe's mailbox. Thanks for the lift. Now I got a quote for you. Either someone's doing some welding down there, or we're talking about some very sub-code wiring. I'm not putting my lips on that. Steel bars in the glass. Apparently this guy has a dog. No thanks. This sandbox has been taken over by a big dog. Smells like burning metal down there. Hmm. No. Hello? Probably all that's holding this dump up. They'd just fall apart. It's even sadder looking inside. Bars. Locked, but flimsy looking. Who 
who's out there? Hey! I'm trying to do my art in here, buddy. I don't got time to waste on bums like you. I'm a friend of Moe's. I need... Listen, I didn't take no welding torch. You hear me? I'm no crook. So get off my back already. What do you want? Mama's face has dripped down into the dirt. This view defines true beauty. I'm not putting my lips on that. I think he's had enough. Looks like a cabinet to me. It's empty, but there's something hanging on the door. It's a lockpick. His decor has a strong carnival coin toss flavor to it. I pictured him having a much larger fridge. It's either dog food or this guy's dinner. I hope he's not trying to bring these to life or anything like that. That would make a good mailbox post in hell. Ouch. I nominate that as least offensive of show. I had a dog with a funnel on its head when I was a kid. Better hustle this back to Mo. <clears throat> That's my welding torch. How'd you get it? Oh, it was just lying around. A pair of forks, little gas, and we're set. Todd's junkyard. Open up, Todd. Oh yeah, I knocked him out. Entrance. Heavy looking. No lock. This should be easy. It comes out a hole in the bottom and goes over that pulley to the other side of the wall.
I don't see nobody. He must have run away. Nah, we would have seen him running from the air. He must be hiding up in the tower. We got him treed. Let's go up and get him. I don't trust anything without wheels. I'd say that's where the gas goes. Hey, who's that down there in the yard? It's him. Get him. Where? Over there. Quick, you go around the other side and we'll have him cornered. Where'd he go? Let's call it quits, huh, boss? No, let's call on reinforcements. <clears throat> oh, good. You get this from the gas tower? Not exactly. Just a pair of new forks and we're on the road. Just the kind of forks I need, right on top. Cycles never die of old age. Ah, junk. Here, Poochie Pooch. Pooch. Bon appetit. Forks. Where'd you find them? 
right next to the knives and spoons. Well, that's it. Wait outside for a minute and I'll finish her up. I'm working on a surprise. I hate surprises. All right, here she comes. Am I cool or what? You're amazing. I should crash that thing every day. So what's the surprise? Oh, just your average everyday pre-regulation destroyer class solid fuel recoil booster. You're serious? Yes. But only the vultures. I have my connections. Now, are you going to try this thing out or not? Ooh, I wish I had a camera. I wish I had some way of paying you back. Just beat it, will ya? You're scaring away my regular customers. Bye, Mo. Send me a postcard from the ambush. said my goodbyes. I don't walk. Not on foot. Back at the gas tower. He's got a lot of nerve, that piece of trash. Let's get him. All units, follow me. Ben, how'd you get behind us? Where are the suits? Corley's making a pit stop. He has a bladder the size of a thimble, man. Ripburger? Haven't seen him in a while. Ben, man, what's the deal? Did you find something up the road? Are we headed for trouble? No. We're in it. Put my head in a basket Cause I'd had a tank full When she blew my gasket I surely was thankful Till I head for the skies up above It's a woman with wheels that I love <sighs> Come on, old man, I gotcha Now, do something incriminating Like ambush somebody Aha, the plot thickens You shouldn't have laughed at me in those board meetings, Malcolm. What a psycho. Gotcha. Hey, look what I found in the bushes. What is that? It's a chokehold. Come here and I'll demonstrate. It's got a camera. I'll get her. No, Nestor will take care of her. You have an important engagement with the rest of the Corley family. Right. But don't forget to destroy that camera. Yeah, yeah. Now then, Malcolm, how about one for the road? Corley? Corley? Ben! <coughs> I guess Rip Berger couldn't wait for natural causes. Just like him to hit a man when his fly's down. <coughs> 
Rip Burger did this to you? Yeah, he knew I was dying, and he knew that my will would put him out of a job. He wants to take over Corley Motors, Ben. Sell it off to foreigners, lay off workers, start making minivans. You understand me? Minivans! Oh. <coughs> you gotta hurt him for me, Ben. Promise me, you'll hurt him bad. I promise. <coughs> I want my daughter to take over the company. You have a daughter? Yeah. And she's a real mechanical genius, Ben. Rebuilt her first carburetor when she was four. Eh, I used to call her the diaper dynamo. <coughs> Find my daughter, Ben. Find Maureen. Maureen? Burger's way ahead of me. I just hope Maureen can handle herself until I get there. Hmm. Gun, I understand. Why'd he bring a camera? Who does this guy work for? Corley Motors? Nestor, what's that moving over there by that pile? I don't know, Rip, but I think that pile is Bolus. <sighs> Yes, now I remember. You're the smart one, aren't you? There's Moe's shack, but I don't see the limo. Maybe I beat the pig. On second thought, maybe I didn't. Looks like someone searched this place in a hurry. Nothing left but debris, except for that smashed up camera. Back's open. No film inside. Hmm. Mo said she didn't have a camera. Here's Mo's picture of her and her Uncle Pete at his mink ranch. She said she went there whenever she needed to get away for a while. That's pretty much my only lead right now. This place is messed up enough. Turning to the scene of the crime. They'll be coming this way soon. I gotta get a plan. Fast. This sucker's mine. Look, I really need a ride. Hey, killer. What? Hey, it's cool. Your secret's safe with me. What secret? Haven't you been watching the news? Once again, our top story tonight, Malcolm Corley, owner of Corley Motors, was found dead at a rest stop just outside the town of Melonweed. Apparently, the benevolent patriarch and CEO was viciously beaten about the head and neck, savagely and without mercy. Police have arrested a notorious outlaw biker gang known as the Polecats. No. With the exception of their leader, who is still at large. Roadblocks have been set up along Highway 9 in an effort to apprehend this 
dangerous, and violent criminal. We've been set up. Roadblocks suck. I shouldn't have left the gang there. Hey, I don't want to hear anything about it. You ain't making me an accessory after the fact. Just lay low, man. Look, let me tell you what happened. I told you, I don't want to get involved. Members of the Polecat Gang are in custody, but their leader remains at large. Authorities have issued an all-points bulletin. They got the Polecats. Latest reports suggest that the leader of the Polecats may have had an accomplice, a young mechanic. Maureen. The two are being sought by authorities for questioning in connection with the violent death of motorcycle magnate Malcolm Corley. Asked about the eminent shareholders meeting, Corley Motors Vice President Adrian Ripberger made the following statement. We cannot in good conscience go forward with the shareholders meeting until the perpetrators of this misdeed have been brought to justice. He's up to something. He wants us dead before the meeting starts. Authorities are still seeking the leader of the Polecats and his accomplice, both thought to be armed and dangerous. He doesn't look happy. He's got a knife. That's your truck out front. I need a ride. I look like a cabbie to you. Get lost. They're not letting anyone through that roadblock anyway. Not even truckers. They turned me around and said police business only. Pigs. Look, I really need a ride. Not gonna happen. Why? Because you're afraid of some cops? No, because I don't like you. I just killed a guy. I'm just about to. I don't think that's good for the table. Hey, Quahog. Yeah, Emmett? I'm gonna be knifing up your table for a while, all right? The customer with the knife is always right. Seem to have a lot of time on your hands. Not to mention nicks and scratches. <laughs> Am I distracting you? Good talking to you. Friendly folks you get in here. Em, it's not what you'd call an I'm okay, you're okay person. Ah, shut your hole, Quahog. No time to talk. You know, it's stank in there, but I can't remember a better sleep. You gotta help me. Go find my editor in Corville. Tell him I took pictures of the Corley murder. You got pictures? <laughs> yeah, but some thug took my camera. So you don't have any pictures? Well, I tracked the guy to Melonweed, but I'm not going near the place. They'd kill me! Get my editor. He's gotta get me out of this. Take one of these fake IDs to get through the roadblocks. My career is riding on those pictures. Help me, Ben. You're my only hope. Oh, don't worry. I owe you one. If Miranda's thug is the same one that trashed Moe's place, that could be Miranda's camera I saw there. But then, who's got the film? Hmm. Oh, Ms. Wood. Go away! You're blowing my cover! Take that. Quit it! Ever hear of this place? Uncle Pete's Mink Ranch. Well, uh, I remember it used to be some sort of weasel plantation or, or something up the road. Down Highway 9 on the other side of them damn roadblocks. I used to pick up mink meat there real cheap and sell it to school lunch programs. <laughs> that was a good scam. 
、ね、I need to get to this place. Uncle beats me, Grinch. I need to go in that direction too, but the pigs are running the sty at night. How poetic. Here. What's that? Fake federal investigator ID. Could be of some use at one of those roadblocks. Hmm. So, how about a ride? What if they search the back and find my bike? It's buried in a pile of concentrated fertilizer powder. Trust me, no one's gonna dig through that crap. Now you're gonna ride in the engine compartment. The engine compartment? Hey, I smuggle stuff in there all the time, and most of it's worth more than you. So, stuff your carcass in there quick, and we might hit that mink dump by morning. Hope you're better with a stick shift than you are with a knife. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Smells like he's got a fuel leak. I love engine fires. Sorry, sir. Only police vehicles be on this point. I'm with the fans, chump. Check it out. Huh? What's this about? Undercover agricultural sting operation. What's in the back? Fertilizer. All right, move along. Hope you rude get your man. <laughs> We stop moving. With your truck? Yeah, <laughs> loose hose and nothing big. I, I already pulled your bike out. It's sitting right over there. Well, nice knowing you. Gotta hit the road, you know. Uh oh. He did have a fuel leak, and he took my fuel line to fix it. That trucker's gonna die for what he did. The barn's locked. Open up, you minx. A picture of Maureen and Malcolm. Looks like they're restoring an old hardtail together. This must be the window Maureen stared out of as a young girl, dreaming of her life repairing toasters. Tough looking padlock. It's a trunk with a Corley Motor sticker on it. I couldn't break that lock. That's the insignia of the vultures. I can't believe Mo used to be a vulture. But then again, how else could she have gotten that recoil booster? Hmm. Hmm. I can use on my bike. I don't think Mo would mind if I borrow him. Mo?
She took my booster fuel. Urgh. Why is she running from me? She must think the whole world's against her. I think I know how that feels. That does it. He's dead. That sign. That means I'm in cavefish territory. is worthless. We have been tricked, my brothers. Back to the cave. Hmm. The place looks deserted. Maybe the boss was wrong and she ain't coming here. She's coming. We just got here first. That means all we have to do is sit here and wait. Looks like Emmett dropped a load here. A lot of weight on those babies. It's bolted on. I ain't looking to buy. Maybe I'll just take a little. I'm no cowboy. It's a good looking bike. Professor Schmetterling's experimental flying suit. This is the last picture ever taken of Professor Schmetterling. Notice, jumping the Poyahoga Gorge, although tempting, is highly illegal and dangerous. We recommend the recently constructed Boyahoga Gorge Bridge for transgorge travel. Drive safely. One of the gorge's many casualties. Ricky Myron's infamous gorge jump. Tightrope walkers, hang gliders, human cannonballs. Many have tried to cross the mighty Boyahoga Gorge, and many have failed. Except for Ricky Myron, the flying torch who jumped the gorge on a stock Corley motorcycle. It was later uncovered that he had modified his Corley with a pre-regulation destroyer class solid fuel recoil booster and an automotive hover lift. Myron said he would gladly replicate the jump to clear his name, but his special ramp was stolen by a mysterious truck hijacking motorcycle gang. 
Hmm. Recoil booster and a hover lift, eh? Thanks for the tip, Rick. You're right, though. I'll need that ramp. Hmm. No. Nah, that's federal property, I think. Something tells me the bridge is out. Not on foot. What's he got that I ain't got? Except for a recoil booster, a hover lift, and a silly looking ramp with dayglow flames painted on it. seen you since you retired from the Polecats. Hey, Ben. How's my gang doing? Uh, that's a long story. What are you doing out here? Well, retirement's pretty boring, Ben. So I thought I'd come out to the old mine road and look for trouble. You're picking fights? That's what the old mine road's for, son. Father Tork, I need your help. Gangs in jail and the law. Ben, I'm not the leader of the Polecats anymore. You are. Can't you see I'm on permanent vacation? You know any way around Boyahoga Gorge? Around it? <laughs> it's miles and miles long, Ben. What's the matter? Don't like bridges? It blew up. Ooh, sorry I missed that. Well, you could jump it, like Ricky Myron. Cape Fish got his ramp in their hideout, you know. Where is the Cape Fish hideout exactly? Somewhere on this road. The entrance is totally invisible, unless you got those weird Cape Fish specs. Any fighting tips, Torque? Ah, Ben, who's tougher than you? Nobody, but those rod wheelers are uglier. They're none too bright either. I'm sure you can handle them. The vultures are quick, and they're nuts. The ones with those boosters are hard to whip. Just remember, Ben, it's not about muscle, it's about timing. What's up with those cavefish, man? Watch out, Ben. They're not out here for sport. They hijack big rigs. It's part of their religion. Don't get in their way. They're blind, cold-hearted killers. How do the cavefish ride if they're blind? Well, they're only blind because they wear those special goggles to shield their sensitive cave-dwelling eyes. Special sensors in the goggles pick up the dots in the road and other large objects and landmarks to help them navigate. <laughs> kind of trippy, huh? Can't talk anymore, Ben. Eating too many bugs. Well, take it easy, Father. Give him hell, Polecat. Choppers, huh? How about this chopper? Ha ha ha! 
Let's chop you down and catch a ring. Oh, my eyes! Say there, is that a pre-regulation destroyer class solid fuel recoil booster you have there? Why, yes it is. Ta-da! <coughs>
What's wrong? Lead diapers? That should have a couple of good boosts left in it. about these guys is creepy. Don't think I'm getting in there. Property of the Ricky Myron Traveling Stunt Show.
I'm done with these boys. Property of the Ricky Myron Traveling Stunt Show. Looks good where it is. <laughs> Look at him run. Shit. That's all of them. Can't be much holding that up now. What a mess. What a stinking mess. I'd call that a road hazard. I've done my heavy lifting for the day.
<laughs> Look at him run. It was Nestor's fault. Get in quick. I have a plan. We're going to lure the Corley running out of hiding with a bike. Boss, she already has a bike. Yes, but this one she worked on with her father. It's an emotional thing. Don't try to understand. Now hurry. That's trashed. <laughs> I don't touch anything without wheels. Now there's one thing I've never needed. Looks okay for an aftermarket part. enough. Factory. Holy ground. Cool. That's a little big for a souvenir. Corley Motors. I've been meaning to come here for years. This is really a religious pilgrimage for me. A religious pilgrimage with a lot of butt kicking. That's one big door. I'm here for the shareholders meeting. 
Mr. Rippergers postponed the meeting until Mr. Corley's murderers are apprehended. All the shareholders were notified. Yeah. Well, I haven't checked my voicemail lately, Mac. Just like the cell doors in solitary. Let me in. Beat it. Jerk. Sucks up the juice. Don't want the power company after me, too. This foundation really needs some work. I'll beat it up later, when I have more time. It's closed. It's closed mechanically, in a serious way. Rusted, too. It's sealed shut. Like something big's going on in there. Souvenirs here. We got your hats. We got your pennants. We got it all right here. Official Corley Motors merchandise. That's what having a regular job will do to you. Drive your own derby car by remote control. Our bunnies come with. It's a joystick, probably for that little car. Lovable, lovable little bunnies. The officially licensed bunny of the Corley Motors Smash Your Torque. Kinda cute. For a car, that is. We got your t-shirts here. All sizes and colors. <laughs> Fill our handy beverage hats with your drink of choice. You'll be keeping cold and looking bold. Uh, you, big fella, come give our derby car a spin. It's the exit. It only spins one way, and it's the wrong way. That's the old hardtail Moe restored with Malcolm. I'm not going in there. They all think I killed their beloved leader. Souvenirs to remind you of your special Smashatorium adventure. Buy your kids a bunny so they'll shut up on the long drive home. Sure, sure. Take it for a spin. Just don't go out of range. Don't be a cheap jerk. Buy something. Looks like it's getting weak. Oh, great. You killed the batteries. <coughs> if we don't got it, then it stinks. <laughs> <clears throat> what can I get you? Why are the lights down here? We got a demolition derby tonight. First prize is a vintage curly hardtail. Completely restored by the old man himself. Yep. What's this big arena doing way out here? Corley built the Smashatorium so his employees could have some wholesome entertainment nearby. He sure took care of his employees. I got no idea what's gonna happen to us now that he's gone. Seen any vultures around here? Nah, we don't have much of a vulture problem here, even though their hideout is right up the road. They stay pretty much locked up in there. Not very social. What's in the hat? I don't know. Came filled with it. Probably some sort of packing material. Packs a punch, I'll tell you that much. I'm looking for a good souvenir. Well, good souvenirs is all I got. What can I fix you up with? How about that little car there? It's small, but it's not cheap, my friend. You better just take it for a test drive to make sure. Those, uh, shirts come in extra, extra large? Eh. Eh, no. But they're pretty shrunk. No thanks. What do those pennants say on them? Can't beat a Corley, they say. Kind of ironic, actually, considering how he died. Still, look great on your bedroom wall. No walls. 
My bike is my home. We could set you up with a little pole so you could uh, make a flag, you know, for your back seat. I'll uh, think about it. Something small, furry, and yellow. Sorry, this is the only set of teeth I got. <laughs> Dang, there goes another one. Bunnies, and plenty of them. You want bunnies? I got your bunnies. How much you got on you? Um, can I just take them out for a test drive? I think you may not be ready for the kind of commitment that comes with a Corley Bunny value pack. Sorry, son. Do you actually have any money? As much as I need. Looky here. Nothing personal, but why don't you mosey along and stop scaring away all the other customers, all right? Just clearing my throat. Pat the bunny. You know you want to. I don't walk. side of this field, I've heard a lot about the vultures. And I guess it's all true. Don't think so. I wonder how they keep it so smooth. Hmm. No. No. You just can't get this stuff anywhere else, folks. And it's cheap, too. All right, let's see the cash, amigo. I'll owe you. No bucks, no yucks, compadre. I'm... Excuse me, but are those shirts, uh, are they all cotton? Well, uh, let's just see here. One hundred percent cotton. Oh. That's too bad. I'm allergic to cotton. What's a couple of bucks in exchange for a timeless memento? Tidy little vultures. Those weapons were at a lot of weight. No bunny putter. Don't worry, I'm insured. Man, that's 
It's a good looking bike. These souvenirs all have an expected appreciation rate of 300% per year. But Don't crowd every... That should put some life into it. Sure, sure. Take it for a spin. Just don't go out of range. That's right. Official Corlett Motors Smashatorium Souvenirs. Okay, that's far enough, bud. Hey, don't go in there. Now look what you did. The entrance is all the way through the factory. Hang on, little buddy. Daddy's coming. Now it's just me and the bunnies. It's a whole box of those furry things. No mementos. I'll have scars enough to remind me of this trip. think so. Hmm. No. any of these boys. That's the guy I was telling you about, Susie. You sure? Yeah. That's the guy who killed my father. All right, vultures! Rack him up! Let's rip him quick. Listen, Mo. You're making a big mistake. Oh, Ben, you're right. We shouldn't do this quickly. We should draw this out, don't you think, Susie? Hey, I got all night. You heard her, kids. Let's draw this out. <laughs> Your father. Don't you dare talk about my father, you heartless bastard. Corley and I. I said shut up about my dad. Malcolm once. I said shut up about my dad. I'm innocent. You're in something, all right. Okay, that's enough. Mm, not quite. Let me go, or else... Or else what? I'll call you names. <laughs> like what? Diaper Dynamo. How... How'd you hear that name? Your father. He told me just before he died. You bludgeoned my father and then talked about old times? I didn't kill him. 
Rip Burger did. A photographer took pictures, but her camera was stolen by the same thug that came after you. I... I still have that role. Well, develop it, would you? While I still fit in my clothes? Okay, you stay here. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, well, don't sweat it. I'm gonna get Rip Burger even if I die trying. No, we have to expose Rip Burger at the shareholders' meeting. That way, we take him down, we save my gang, and your father gets his dying wish. You take over Corley Motors. Rip Burger canceled the shareholders' meeting. He made a statement to the press that there'd be no meeting until the murderers were brought to justice. So... No shareholders meeting until we're both dead? Hmm. That could be arranged. Okay, so here we go. Faking Ben and Maureen's death. Act one, scene one. Adrian Ripburger, in a desperate attempt to lure our Maureen out of hiding, has developed the following lame-ass scheme. First prize at tonight's smash-up derby is a vintage hardtail that Mo restored with her dad. Rip hopes Mo will try to nab said bike on account of her sentimental attachment to it. So Ben and Mo play along, put on disguises, and enter the demolition derby, which ends tragically when their cars explode and both are presumed dead. Uh, question. Please save your questions until the end. Now, the explosives in Mo's car can only be triggered by a head-on collision with Ben's car. This ejector seat projects Mo clear of the explosion, and she parachutes to safety. Don't you think someone will notice her ejecting out of her car? No, they'll all be watching you running around on fire. Yeah, that's another question I have. When your car explodes, you climb from it in flames and run around the stadium distracting the audience. In your cute little asbestos suit, of course. <laughs> That's some plan. All right, then. Let's go blow your little darlings up. All right, folks. Hang on to your chili dogs, because it's time to start. The Corley Motor Smashatorium Amateur Driver Ultimate Destruction Maximum Carnage Marathon. Let's meet our crash cage gladiator. That mysterious-looking hooded figure wouldn't give us his real name. He prefers to be known as the Unknown Avenger. And that's just fine with us, isn't it, folks? <laughs> now I'm just embarrassed for them. Who do they think they're fooling with those ludicrous disguises? And next to him is another masked newcomer. Please give a big smashatorium salute to the princess of Pyla, Doreen Schmorley. All right, boys. Sick of it. And finally, we have a last minute addition to the lineup tonight, a deadly looking team known as the Boom Boom Brothers. Right now, are you ready to see some reckless driving? Are you ready to see some unnecessarily violent destruction? Then let the demolition derby begin! Where are you, Ben? Hang on, Mo. Here I come. Watch out for the Boom Boom Brothers, Mo. That car stalled when I bounced off the roof. Looks like these babies have a glass jaw. Man, what are you doing? Get over here and nail me!
brothers. It's all over. Get him! What are you doing? Are you taking a nap? <sighs> Idiots. Okay, Mo. Time for our big finale. Do it! Now that's an explosion, ladies and gentlemen. Can't see any survivors. Wait, what's that? It's the Unknown Avenger, and he's on fire! Let's give him a hand, folks. That looks painful. We really should put him out right away, but what a show, huh? Whew. What a pain threshold. Well, we should put him out, don't you think? Well, okay, you heard him, Avenger. This is your moment to shine. Man, quit clowning around and make a diversion. I am a diversion. No offense, but we need a bigger one. The bike is guarded. Who cares about the bike? Mo says it's important, so we're not leaving without it. All right, I'll see what I can do, but I'm burning at both ends here. Looks like all the vultures are in there. Hey, Susie. Ben, quit yapping and make something happen, will ya? Later, hopefully. They can't get past that guard, I guess. So he's got a club. So what? Rush him. That guard is stopping the vultures from stealing Goldie's bike. Help, guard. I'm on fire. Hm. Typical. Can't reach him. That's the hard tail Mo fixed up with her dad. Gotta make a big, big diversion. We ain't leaving without that bike. Oh, the humanity! I guess the Avenger never heard of stop, drop, and roll, huh? Well, folks, it looks like the party's getting a little out of hand. The stadium seems to be catching fire, but let's all remain calm and... Yeah, you're right. The derby's over. Finally. Now, squish that firefly while he's hot. <laughs> Look at him run. Did you get him? We finally got him, Bolas. That means Ripburger has to make us vice presidents now, like he promised. And give us 10,000 shares of stock each. Hmm. Funny smell. What's that? The temperature light? Well, on the bright side, I just made 20,000 shares of stock. Time to start the shareholders' meeting. Where's the hardtail? All over the floor, Mr. Avenger. What? What happened to your deep sentimental attachment to your father's vintage bike? Ben, it's just a bike. I can put it back together in about a half an hour. That's assuming, of course, I can find that key. What key are you talking about? Key to my dad's safe. I remember he hid it somewhere on this bike. But I've looked everywhere and I can't find anything that even looks like a key. What's in the safe that's so important? My dad's will. I'm counting on him to tell the truth about me, finally. Why did he keep you a secret all these years? He didn't want people to find out about my mom. What's so bad about Mrs. Corley? She wasn't my mom. Huh. But how are we going to get in the factory? In the back of the factory, there's a secret entrance that leads straight into Dad's office. He used to sneak me in so I could help him with his bike designs. When he got too old to do all the work himself? 
Nah, this is back when I was six. Hmm. How do I find the secret passage? Well, it's tricky. You have to wait for all the utility meters to turn black. Then you kick the wall in just the right spot and you're in. How do I find the right spot to kick? Dad just knew exactly where to kick it. But I remember that there was this big crack in the wall. And if I lined up that crack with my eye level and kicked the wall right in front of me, this weird portal would open up. Hmm. What if I can't find that spot? Just line up your eyes with the crack, wait for the meters to go black, and kick. That kicking part is pretty vague. Look, I was only six. Give me a break. I'll never find that secret passage. Hey, Ben, can't you see I'm busy? If I could find the spot to kick when I was only six, I'm sure you can find it on your own. How was your flight? Well, there were some explosions during takeoff and I landed in a minefield. But other than that, it was fine. I'm fine, by the way. Thanks for asking. Uh -huh. Great, now help me find that key. What are we in, anyway? It's a C-330 Big Mouth Industrial Cargo Jumbo Transport we fixed up. We want to get it rolling so we can take it to biker rallies. You're going to try to fly this thing? Rolling, Ben. Rolling. This baby's flying days are over, just like mine. Remember that time you tried to kill me? Yeah, we really taught you a lesson. <laughs> get it? I'll see what I can do. Right. She looks busy. Later, hopefully. Hmm. 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 Nah, I think she has them in order. Here, take the photos. I don't want them. Show them to someone important if you get a chance. Look at that stadium burn. Sorry, the meeting's already started. I know. Let me in. Mr. Ripperger's giving his keynote address. No interruptions. But I'm a shareholder. Yeah, right. Jerk. That's art. Out of reach. Look at that stadium burn. That's gonna take a bite out of the pension fund. Thick glass. Shatterproof. Very austere, no drawers. Furniture moving? No. There's uh, some sort of card. A tape. I sure hope that's Corley's will.
It's empty. It's open. Looks like the meeting started. Was not only an inspirational leader, but also a great personal friend. His loss affects us all deeply. Malcolm and I spoke often of the future. We talked of a day when Corley Motors would move beyond its humble beginnings into a new vehicular age. And although his tragic death took him from us sooner than anyone expected, Malcolm Corley's dream remains. And I shall carry out that dream in his memory. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to present to you the future of Corley Motors. The Corley Minivan. <laughs> Uh, Corley was right. I never dreamed it would actually come to minivans, though. Hey, who are you? How long have you been there? Oh, security! Help! Security! What took you so long? He ran down the hallway. Move it. Mavis must be saying things. It's locked. This is where you put the card. I don't want to set off any alarms. Cool. My vision. <laughs> what you see before you right now is my vision for Oh, perfect. This is a disaster. You're telling me. We're gonna have some major downtime here. Why don't you tell a joke or something? <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know any jokes. <laughs> you know, this reminds me of an amusing anecdote. <laughs> About her... Uh, uh, I... Well, I'm out of ideas. I can see all over the company from here. I don't want to set off any alarms. It's locked on that easel. This is where you put the cards for the big screen video projector. No. Now this is multimedia. No. No. Now, this next slide shows our new, more aggressive corporate strategy. <laughs> Hello there. If you're hearing this, I must have croaked. Well, people gotta move on, you know, and make room for other people. And that's what I'm here to talk about today. I've made room for someone else to take my place at Corley Motors. And it ain't that embezzling crook, Adrian Rickford. Rip, you don't belong at the head of my company. You belong in jail. Uh... I let that man talk me into far too many things. Like keeping my daughter a secret. 
He was wrong. I was wrong. I should have stood by him. I hope, Maureen, that you forgive me, and that you take over Corley Motors and run it however you see fit. All right, that's enough. How do I turn this damn thing off? I... Uh, I'm sorry you had to hear that tape from one of Malcolm's psychiatric sessions. And near the end, he, he suffered many paranoid delusions. He was haunted by powerful forces of his own creation. And here's one of them. <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Maureen Corley, and do I have a heck of a story for you. By the time I'm done, you'll see why this man should be in jail. Hey! Where'd he hobble off to? Uh-oh. There he goes. And then he sent his goons after me. Run, Rip Burger. When it's time to find you, we'll just follow the shiny trail. Yes, of course we'll have daycare facilities. Any other questions? Oh, speak of the devil. Come over here, Ben. That is great, Ben. Find where we were meant to be all alone. So, after we pick up your bike, we'll go get my gang out of jail. And then find out why my gang never showed up to help us. And then you go business suit shopping. Don't remind me. Don't complain. You're going to be rich. At this point, I settle for just a little peace and quiet.
I thought you said this thing couldn't move. I said it couldn't fly. I never said it couldn't taxi. Well, flying would be nice since we're headed for the gorge. Ripperger, you're going to kill all of us. Shh, Ben, don't ruin the ending. How do you stop this thing? From the cockpit! Back off, man! Doc! Careful, Ben! Ben! Quit yapping and make something happen, will ya? So much for the controls. I could have used those. Damn. Busted. Those might have been useful. That's trashed. Not working. That might have been useful. Nothing. What the? No! Ben, what did you do? Are you alive? I am, but I don't know about Rip Burger. I can see him. He's out cold. Climb back here quick. Careful, Ben. I'm taking you and your friends with me, Ben. All you're taking is the wrong kind of medication. One ill tempered mongrel. Can't reach him. Jerk. I think you just killed a seagull! Can't leave that behind. Life was a game to him, and he played it by his own rules. He was a mystery to most of us, and yet an inspiration to us all. 
He gave us freedom. He gave us power. He gave us wings. He gave us wheels. Thank you, Malcolm Corley, for giving us a dream that will never die. So, so, uh, maybe we could do lunch sometime next week. Yeah, sure. Lunch sounds great. Things aren't gonna change, are they, Ben? I mean, just because I'm in charge of the company now and living in a mansion and riding around in limos, that doesn't mean we won't spend a lot of time together, does it? Look, Mo, you're in a different league now. You shouldn't be hanging out with the likes of me anymore. But Ben. Just a second. Hello? What? No, no, no. That's crazy. Is he nuts? Look, move the meeting up to five and tell the plant foreman that I'm coming over personally to inspect those parts. I know. I know. That's what I told him. <sighs> Excuse me. What was that last part? No, no, no. That alloy was flawed to begin with. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Good. Great.
I'm telling you once and I ain't getting round You got two weeks to get out of town Gonna give you two weeks till I break out the plow Set the scarecrow free the mistake in the ground So long Roll on The plow is greased and it's ready to crease Did it get out of town? is greatly decreased and now the odds are greatly increased that I may someday get a chance to kiss your lips I thank the Lord each day for the apocalypse out there. Hey, I'm trying to do my art in here, buddy. I don't got time to waste on bums like you. I'm a friend of Moe's. I need... Listen, I didn't take no welding torch. You hear me? I'm no crook. So get off my back already. What do you want? I got a guy coming to look at my art. So blow. 
This is important. Not to me, you freaky looking hood. Now bait it! You knock for a reason or you just not? Let me in. Ha! Ha ha ha! Good one, punk. Get away from my door! I'm about to roll this tin can. That's it! I'm calling the cops. Good. I've been meaning to report a stolen welding torch. Eh. You stick around long enough and maybe they'll pick you up with a trash. Candy Graham. That's it. If you don't take off for good, I'll... You what? I'll glaze your ugly puss with my welding torch. I mean, my, um, uh, my hairdryer. I'll get out my hairdryer and burn you, so beat it. Hey, dirtbag, I... Building inspector. No dice. Get a life, you loser. Got some flowers here. Scram! What do I have to do to get rid of you? What do I have to do to get rid of you? Hey, you lousy noob. Can I use your phone? Beat it! What do you want? I'm here to look at the art. Nice try. Hey, dirtbag. You've won something. Let me in. Give it up. Get away from my... Quick. The whole trailer's on fire. Hit the road. Get a life. Hi. I'm from Mobile Manor Magazine. Get your greasy, oily, leather-wearing carcass off my property. What do I have to do to get rid of you? Get a life, you loser. This is the police. Enough already. Get away from my... I'm selling these fine leather jackets. Give it up. Hey, dirtbag. I take it all back. Now let me in. Beat it. Hey! I'm trying to do my art in here, buddy. You stick around long enough and maybe they'll pick you up. Don't make me come in there. Hit the road. Hey! I'm trying to do my art in here, buddy. What do you want? I'm getting angry. Nice try. I got a guy coming to look at my art. Come out here a second. I want to show you something. Scram! Who's out there? Hey! I'm trying to do my art in here, buddy. I don't got time to waste on bums like you. Hey, you lousy no what do you want? I got a guy coming to look at my yard. So blow. Can't you talk? Yeah. Hey, you lousy no Oh boy, I love the <laughs> You knock for a reason or you just nuts? Get away from my door, you bonehead punk. You stick around long enough and maybe they'll pick you up with a trash. Ha! <laughs> Yeah, you lousy no Oh boy, I love the <laughs> Hey, dirtbag. I ain't home. Get a life, you loser. What do I have to do to get rid of you? Yeah, you lousy nobody. Oh boy, I love the
private property. Remain still, we will not shoot you. Sucker, there's time. Damn. Ah. Damn. 
Oh yeah, you sure are good at that, buddy. You're pathetic. Looks like a mink pelt. Lots of mink pelts. Kinda give the room a musky odor. Good thing these aren't polecat hides. Seeing all these mink hides strung up reminds me of my gang in jail. Minks are closely related to ferrets, actually, and a ferret is just a domesticated polecat. This room is really starting to depress me. How could Mo live in a room filled with dead animal hides? I'm surprised there aren't more flies. Too bad she's not the fur coat type. Hmm, I could make some fuzzy dice out of these for my handlebars. I gotta get out of here. Let's rip him quick. Listen, Mo, you're making a big mistake. Oh, good. You're right. We shouldn't do this quickly. We should draw this out, don't you think, Susie? Hey, I got all night. You heard her, kids. Let's draw this out. <clears throat> Your father. Don't you dare talk about my father, you heartless bastard. Corley and I... I said shut up about my dad! Malcolm wants... I said shut up about my dad! I'm innocent. You're in something, alright. Okay, that's enough. Mm, not quite. <clears throat> I'm losing my temper, Maureen. And hey, you're about to lose much more. Let me go, or else... Or else what? I'll sick the polecats on you. The polecats are in jail, Ben. You put them there, remember? Let me go, or else... Or else what? I'll tear this place apart. Ironic choice of words, Ben. <laughs> Let me go, or else... Or else what? I'll get blood all over your driveway. That's good for the landscaping, actually. Let me go, or else... Or else what? I'll call your names. <laughs> like what? Mink farmer. <laughs> Let me go, or else... Or else what? I'll call your names. <laughs> like what? Freaky toaster loving old maid. <laughs> Let me go or else. Or else what? I'll call your names. <laughs> like what? Rat bike riding rubber covered vultures. Let me go, or else... Or else what? Ah, Corley was right. I never dreamed it would actually come to minivans, though. Hey, who are you? How long have you been there? Oh, security! Help! Security! What took you so long? He ran down the hallway. Move it. Mavis must be saying things. Man, that Ripburger can yap. Where does he get this crap? Ah! Help! Security! It was that same guy, the big one. Catch him this time, will ya? This is gonna get old fast. Check out that double chin. 
What a stuffed shirt. Ah! Help! Security! Why can't you catch that guy? Donuts weighing you down. That woman needs some sleep. Jeez, my feet are killing me. When's this thing gonna end? Ah! He was in here again. Are you even looking? Maybe she's just lonely. Blah, blah, blah. I sure miss old Corley. Ah! I could be dead by now with all your protection. Hmm. I wonder if this could be Mavis's way of getting my attention. Ah! Don't look at me like that. Hey, I wonder if she's got a thing for me. Ah! How could you miss a big guy like that? Yeah, I think that Mavis is trying to send me a message. Ah! You think I'm kidding around here? Why doesn't she just ask me in for some coffee? Ah! Are you getting paid? This is getting old. Ah! Ah, forget it. Negative variances. Well, it's <laughs> What the? What the hell is going on up there? I'm on it. The motor speed got off is all. Hang on a minute. Uh, yeah, yes. Back to the presentation. I hate this old equipment. My girdle needs less adjusting. Ay, ay, ay. This is intolerable. I'm on it. The motor speed got off is all. Hang on a minute. Uh. Yeah, uh, yes. Now then. Adapt or perish. Not again. Not again. Just a lamp adjustment. Be fixed in no time. Uh. Yeah, yes. Now then. Oh, for crying out loud. You, in the control booth, wake up! Just a lamp adjustment. Be fixed in no time. At least the film didn't burn, huh? Uh, yes. As I was saying... Come on, old timer. We are a high-tech corporation. This can't happen. Yeah, uh, yes. Back to the presentation. 
I've about had it with you. I've just about had it with you. Sorry about that. Modern. You can be replaced, you know. As soon as this meeting's over, you're fired! Sorry about that. I'm gonna kick you until you're dead, you Stone Age heap. I can do worse things than fire you, you know. Back to the presentation. Tomorrow, I call the service guy. I'm calling the temp agency tomorrow. Back to the presentation. Compromise. Did your warranty just run out or something? I knew unionization would lead to this. Where was I? Negative variances. <laughs> ah, just fix it. Where was I? Try that again. Damn, let me try that again. Try that again. Wait, come back! We need your weight in the plane! Ouch. Let me try that again.